COSPAC has been working to ensure that climate data meets the needs of Pacific communities by combining climate science and traditional knowledge with effective communication. Within the communities, women are the first responders and they are the front lines in terms of climate crisis and disasters. COSPAC is really useful to us. It helps us a lot in issuing our monthly bulletins and also they guide us in our work on how we, we produce our bulletins and how we communicate it to the communities. From your team here at the Met Service, have a safe week. COSPAC is about being able to help Pacific Met Services and their communities become more climate resilient. So we need to get that message to all groups. Whenever we go out to media, we are confident on the choice of words to use, the language to use, how to communicate climate information, technical information to different type of people. Each country is different. I think being able to see and identify the needs for each different country and work with them on it is a key thing you know, in terms of support from the CCU. In Vanuatu, Women Weta Mweta is a network of women that use mobile phones to share useful climate information. My role is Woman Weta Mweta, and I work with 5,000 women within a network called Women Talk Talk Together. In terms of uh, Women Weather Watch, they receive weather and climate information from us, and they use it in preparation for their daily activities. This is a vital information that needs to be given out to the communities or women need to know about this. Climate data helps farmers, it helps women, and it helps the community to build up and also being resilient to any climate impacts that we will be facing. Our science is really no good unless it's been communicated well in a timely manner. Capacity development is essential to that so that MET services and their stakeholders understand the products and how to use them and what actions that they should take. COSPAC's coordination and communication unit supports key areas, including capacity development, gender and social inclusion, traditional knowledge, monitoring, evaluation and learning. We trained over 2,600 stakeholders. They were people from the Met Services, from the Land Survey Departments, from external stakeholders, and we had over 600 training days. In the Pacific, traditional knowledge is a unique way to predict incoming climate and weather events. In New Way, the Girls and Boys Brigade are learning how traditional knowledge can help to predict the severity of the cyclone season. There's a belief or a tradition by our elders to say that the yams, they can tell when a cyclone is approaching the island or when there's a severe weather on the way. Because the yam vines, as it grows upwards, it's a sign that there is no cyclone. If it stops growing or growing down backwards again, that's a sign that it's approaching. There is a lot of risk in our Pacific Island communities. We are losing a lot of this uh, knowledge rapidly. In fact, we don't realize how much we've lost. The traditional knowledge database provides partner countries with a central register to manage their climate, ocean, and geohazard records. Combining traditional knowledge with improved communication strategies is an effective way of engaging local communities. Bringing uh, climate traditional knowledge and the science knowledge together is a way to go for us. This is what we need to do. We need to get our heads dirty and work with nature, understand nature, connect with nature, so we can make better decisions. We can understand what we're forecasting. It's important because it builds community confidence in the work that we're doing. It blends traditional work, traditional culture, with modern information and data. 